Good morning. My name is Chad Jordan. I'm the high school principal here at Green County Tech. It is a privilege for me to welcome you to our 46th annual Veterans Day Assembly. The faculty, staff, and students here at GCT and I sincerely want to thank all of our servicemen, their guests, and community, community members who have joined us here today for this celebration. Would you please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the presentation of our nation's colors, the national anthem, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you bow and pray with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. What a great God that you are. Dear God, I want to thank you right now for the privilege of the freedom that we get to enjoy each and every day in the United States. Dear God, I also pray that everything that we do today honors those who sacrificed time with their family, dear God, time away in other countries, God, to defend the freedom that we get to enjoy. God, we thank you for all your many blessings. In your name I pray, amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, in tribute to the men and women who have served in each branch of our armed forces, the GCT Band and Choir will perform the song related to that branch of service and the JROTC will present the flag of each branch. We ask that the veterans stand for their branch of service as the song is played and the flag that represents their branch of service is displayed.
Space on song, U.S. Army. U.S. Coast Guard. At this time, we would like to recognize those veterans that served their country during times of war. Would those who served during World War II please stand? Thank you. Thank you. Would those who served during the Korean War please stand? Thank you. 
Would those who served during the Vietnam War please stand? Thank you. Would those who served during the Persian Gulf War please stand? Thank you. Would those who are or have been serving during Enduring Freedom in, a, in Afghanistan or Operation Iraqi Freedom please stand? Thank you. And finally, because we know that it is not just the men and women who served in the military that sacrifice for their country and for freedom, it is also the loved ones who are left behind who also bear the part of the burden. If you have a loved one who is now serving or has served in the military, please stand. Thank you. your bags and shut the door you crossed the sea to fight a war you didn't know just what would happen to you stepped in the dirt boots on the ground and gunfire was the only sound and from your lips you whispered
you, veterans. Ladies and gentlemen, for the seventh presentation of the Gerald Fraley Sr. and Gerald Fraley Jr. Scholarship, please welcome Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Antoline, Commander of the GCT JROTC, Mr. David Fraley, son of Gerald Fraley Sr. and the Veterans Day Program Director, Lori Dial. Good morning. <clears throat> Honor, courage, commitment, selflessness, service, integrity, dedication, and pride. All character traits of veterans, as well as those who are in the GCT Air Force Junior ROTC program, along with pride in school family, community, and country. These are the things that separate these GCT Air Force Junior ROTC students from the rest of the young men and women. It was this in mind that the Freely Family Scholarship was created and then the continued development of those character traits, as well as the idea that it is our duty to pay it forward, to give the GCT member an opportunity to also pay it forward. Having been the best of the best GCT has to offer, they now can understand that their hard work has now paid off. Their dedication and self-sacrifice to the program was worth it. It is my hope that this person will take this to use it for themselves, but more importantly to use as an opportunity to get set on their own path in life, which is to serve their community their state, and their country in some wonderful way. Thank you. It is my honor to announce that this year's scholarship recipient is Mr. Derek Wesley Bateman. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lori Dial, and I'm the theater director and the program coordinator for uh, this ceremony that you're a part of today. I want to take a moment to thank every one of you for being here, especially to our esteemed and special guests and our, our special guest speaker today, Mr. Colonel Todd. It takes a village to uh, make this program happen, and we have a wonderful faculty and staff and student body here at Greene County Tech, and I am very blessed to be a part of it. Each year, the English department hosts a writing competition for poetry, essays, or fiction on a patriotic topic. This year's third place winner is junior Jenna Rogers, who wrote an essay called America the Beautiful, and in it, she advocates for respect of our flag and national anthem and calls for national unity. The second place winner is Elizabeth Knoll, a GCT junior, who wrote about how the Revolutionary War, immigration in the early 20th century, and then our veteran sacrifices are all reasons to always stand for our national anthem and to respect our flag. The first place winner is sophomore Erin Bradley, who writes about how her family's connection to an Army veteran has taught her to respect her flag and national anthem. She writes that, we should beam with pride when we see old glory flying. Our chests should swell as the Star Spangled Banner plays, and we should proudly cover our heart in reverence. How about a big round of applause?
one of our beloved students who is also helping me at the soundboard today. She's a very multi-talented young lady. We're very proud of her. She has quite an example of love and patriotism in her own life that I have asked her to share. Would you please welcome GCT senior, Miss Amaya Seals. Good morning. I'm Amaya Seals, a senior here at Green County Tech, and today I was speaking about my grandfather, who I affectionately called Papa. He was pictured here with my, um, as a three weeks old. And my Papa is Rick Knoll, who was born on December 20th, 1960. He was a father of Josh, Zach, and Cody Knoll. He also became the stepfather to Matthew and Jennifer Hobbs when he married my grandmother, who I'll call Gammy Jocelyn Knoll. My papa is also a veteran. In 1980, he was stationed at the Naval Station in Norfolk, Virginia. He was a photographer's mate second class. He served in the Navy until November 1985 when he was discharged. After the Navy, he moved to the DC area and began working for E-Systems doing government contracting. Three years later, he moved back to Arkansas and began working for HDR as a CNC mechanist, machinist. Sorry. He continued to work for HDR until the fall of 96 when he went to work for MDR driving a semi-truck and later on began to drive for Card Express. My papa was a truck driver sorry, until he was assaulted on July 18, 2007 in West Virginia. Two days later, July 20th, he passed away at the age of 46 due to severe brain swelling. The loss of my papa was one of the hardest times of my life, as well as for my family. <laughs> my grandfather's son, husband, father, friend, and brother, and just in general, an amazing person was taken from this world. But because of his passing, he gave others another shot at life. <laughs> On July 22nd, he donated his organs. <laughs> His heart was donated to a man named Robert McClintock, who struggled with heart disease all his life. Robert is from Connellsville, Pennsylvania. He's pictured with me at the age of eight and a half. <laughs> and he was born on November 11th, 1935, which just, happened, which just so happens to be Veterans Day as well. Just like my papa, Robert is also a veteran. <laughs> just like, oh, sorry. Robert served in the Air Force from May 13th 1955 until May 21st, 1956 at City Slamane Air Base in French Morocco. He continued to serve till January 31st, 1961 when he was honorably discharged. My family and I had the opportunity to meet Robert and his nephew, Don, on April 10th, 20, 2010. But when Robert came to visit, he was sick with cancer. The cancer had already taken over most of his body, so treatment did little to nothing to help. Robert passed away from cancer on October 4th, 2010, at the age of 74. Though my papa and Robert did not know each other, Robert allowed my papa's heart to beat for three more years. And for that, my family and I are extremely grateful. Because of the tragic loss of one veteran, another veteran's life was saved. And through the lives of both these valiant defenders of our country, both my family and our country were blessed. If you would like to see pictures of Robert and my papa, there's a table at the back of the auditorium on the right that has a few of their photos and personal belongings. Thank you. I told you she's pretty special. At this time, I would like to welcome to the stage Mr. Mark Frank, Arkansas Department of Veterans Affairs District 5 Veteran Service Officer for a few words to our esteemed veterans.
Thank you, Ms. Dial. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Mark Frank. I am the Arkansas Department of Veterans Affairs District 5 Veteran Service Officer. I have the honor and privilege of serving over almost 18,000 veterans in our District 5 area. Uh, Ms. Dial was has given me the pleasure to introduce myself to you as well as my other seven county service officers that we have in this area at this time uh, and give you a little bit of background about what we do in, as a veteran service officer. We are here to help our veterans get past the hurdles of the VA, whether it's through health care or through uh, filing claims with the VA. Uh, we are more than happy to do that as well. i uh, also like to say that we, I do have a booth set up outside, so if any, with our uh, contact information for any of our veterans or spouses or dependents that have questions about what benefits that may, they may be eligible for as well. Uh, if you, and I would be glad to meet with you after the program to answer any questions you might have. I thank you very much. I walked through a county courthouse square on a park bench, an old man was sitting there. He, I said, your courthouse is kind of run down a little bit. He, he's run down. He said, no, nah, it'll do for our little town. I said, your old flagpole is leaned a bit, and that's a ragged old flag you have hanging on it. He said, have a seat, and I sat down. Is this the first time you've been to our little town? I said, I think it is. He said, I don't like to brag, but we're kind of proud of that ragged old flag. You see, we got a little hole in that flag there when Washington took it across the Delaware. And she got powder burned when Francis Scott Key sat watching it writing, oh say can you see. And it got a bad rip in New Orleans with Packingham and Jackson tugging at its seams. And it almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag, but she waved on though. And she got cut with a sword at Chancellorsville and she got cut again at Shiloh Hill. There was Robert E. Lee, Beauregard and Bragg and the south wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. On Flanders Field in World War I, she got a big hole from a Bertha gun. And in World War, and she turned blood red in World War II. And she hung limp and low a time or two. She was in Korea, Vietnam, she went where she was sent by her Uncle Sam. And she waved from our ships upon the briny foam. And now they've about quit waving back here at home. In her own good land there, she's been abused. She's been burned, dishonored, denied, and refused. And the government for which she stands is scandalized throughout the land. 
And she's getting threadbare and she's wearing thin But she's in good shape for the shape she's in Cause she's been through the fire before And I believe she can take a whole lot more So we raise her up every morning We take her down every night We don't let her touch the ground and we fold her upright On second thought I do like to brag because I am mighty proud of that ragged old flag. Colonel retired Nathaniel Nate Todd hails from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. He is currently the director of the Arkansas Department of Veterans Affairs. Prior to his current appointment, he served as the chief financial officer for the Central Arkansas Veterans Health Care System, North Little Rock, Arkansas. Prior to his retirement from military service, he served as the director of health financial policy, office of the U.S. Army Surgeon General, Falls Church, Virginia. Nate entered the Army as a private first class after graduating and participating in the Junior Air Force ROTC at Pine Bluff High School. He has served in a mix of TOE field and TDA fixed facilities. Nate served as a parish council lay leader in several military faith communities, chair of the trustee board Bethlehem Baptist Church, Lawson Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and studied stewardship at the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education of Nas National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. Nate is currently a member of the First Missionary Baptist Church in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. His awards and decorations are many, and his dedication to his country is highly evident in his service. Please welcome Colonel Nate Todd. Good morning, Greene County. It is the veteran that is the preacher who has given us freedom of religion. It is the veteran that is the reporter who has given us freedom of the press. It is the veteran that is the poet who has given us freedom of speech. It is the veteran that is the campus organizer who has given us freedom to assembly. It is the veteran that is also the lawyer who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the veteran who is also the politician who has given us the right to vote. It is the veteran who salutes the flag. It is the veteran who serves under the flag, whose casket is draped by the flag so that those that protest may kneel and still be protected by the flag of the United States of America. Green County, it is my honor to visit with you this morning and to see these fine young people. If you are a senior at Green Tech. Would you stand up, please, if you're a senior? I salute you. Why do I salute you? And you can sit down. Because as your principal recognize those World War II veterans, they once were also seniors. As your principal recognized that career veteran, they were once seniors. As your principal recognized 
those patriots of the Vietnam War, they were once seniors. Those of us who served during Persian Gulf, 9-11, in Afghanistan and Iraq, they were once seniors. Today, I have my lifelong friend with me, Mr. Rudy McNeely, Charles McNeely. 42 years ago, we were seniors. And when we graduated, we raised our hand up to serve this country. I had participated in ROTC. Charles had participated on the gridiron and in the classroom. And Mr. Jordan, I must say that you have some fine athletes and some fine ROTC students here at Green Tech. But not only that, I've seen I've seen the musicians, and yes, some of them will serve also. Not only that, the students that wrote about our great country in this flag, and the young lady that shared, that shared, that the young lady that shared the heartbreak of that fine veteran grandfather of us. I share with you today that freedom isn't free. That tomorrow morning, there will be an enemy of this country that will want to disturb this great way of life that we have. This great democracy where, like on yesterday, we went, we elected those who will represent us, and today we will get behind them and ensure that not only in America, but in Arkansas, we enjoy this great quality of life that we have. The quality of life where educators come into the classroom to ensure that we not only understand arithmetic, but we understand the history of this great country. A country and a way of life that every day first responders, policemen and firemen, stand ready for the call of duty. A way of life where on Sunday, Sunday school teachers, deacons and ministers are prepared to share the bread of life to he or she, regardless of their faith. But today, it starts with what you in Greene County are doing. What you in Greene County are doing is ensuring that this next generation takes on the banner. The banner that as sure as that flag waves will be challenged again. And what I've saw here today and what I'm seeing is they will answer the call. They'll answer the call just like their grandfathers. They'll answer the call just like their fathers, and in today's army, just like their mothers and their aunts. We have a great country. However, it has to be taught. And that's what you have done here today. On behalf of our governor, and by the way, I will tell the governor that the taxpayers of Greene County sure invested in a fine school. And we'll thank you for that. On behalf of our governor, Frank, I want to thank you for in those district and the, the county veteran service office. We are prepared to ensure that those veterans that have served this country so well receive those entitlements that they've earned. But more importantly, this country and this state is prepared to ensure that the sons and daughters that we sent off to defend this country are prepared with the proper equipment and the proper training. Green County, I want to thank you for this opportunity. I want to thank you for the vision that I've seen today, that our country is in good hands. Thank you.
Um, I just want to say that first off, it's an honor to be up here. So thank you to all the veterans. Get myself situated. If you're reading this Well, my mama's sitting there Looks like I only got a one-way ticket over here I sure wish I could give you one more kiss Or it was just a game we played when we were kids So I'm laying down my gut Hanging on my boots I'm up here with God And we're both watching over you So lay me down In that open field Out on the edge of town And oh my soul It's where my mama always brings Halfway around the world I won't be there to see the birth of our little girl I hope she looks like you I hope she fights like me And stands up for the innocent and the weak So I'm laying down my gut Hanging on my boots Tell dad don't regret that I followed in his shoes So lay me down In that open field out on the edge of town And oh my soul It's where my mama always prayed that it would go I'm already in. If you're reading this, there's gonna be a day you move on and find someone else, and that's okay. Just remember this. A better place where soldiers live in peace and angels sing amazing grace. Lay me down in that open field out on the edge of town. And oh, my soul, it's what my mama always prays. If you're reading this, I'm already in. Thank you. Each year, Greene County Tech solicits submission of Greene County veterans for the Veterans Hall of Fame. It is always difficult, it is always a difficult decision for the committee to choose each year's inductees. Please welcome Mrs. Sullivan for the presentation of this year's inductees into the GCT Veterans Hall of Fame.
As Mr. Jordan has said, my name is Lee Sullivan. I am the chairman of the Greene County Tech Social Studies Department, and I've taught here for, okay, I have to do the math, <clears throat> 34 years. And I have been fortunate <clears throat> to be involved in the Veterans Day program um, from the beginning. Um, I was one of the first, um, among one of the first classes here at Tech to be able to participate in the program. And since I've been here, I've again been fortunate to be in charge of the Veterans Hall of Fame. And one thing I would really urge you to do, if you have a loved one, associated with Green County Tech who has served their country, um, it would be a fantastic thing if you could nominate them and we would have that chance to honor them as we would, we would like to do all our veterans. I'm going to start out with our first veteran and we have three today. Um, this veteran served in the Army and he served during World War II. He served for three years and 32 days. Um, he was a corporal, and he served in the Western Pacific, the Eastern Mandates, and when he returned to Greene County, he was a farmer where he liked to duck and quail hunt, he liked to fish, and he liked to work on his tractors and his vehicles. Uh, he was awarded two bronze stars for the Western Pacific and Eastern Mandates. He was awarded a Good Conduct Medal, um, an Asiatic Pacific Theater Campaign Ribbon, an American Theater Campaign Ribbon, uh, four overseas bars, and other awards as well. He served as a chauffeur to high-ranking officials um, during official military occupations. He was a light truck driver, his responsibilities included checking operations of lights, brakes, steering, and operating parts, uh, servicing the vehicle, cleaning, lubricating the vehicle, tightening and replacing all the nuts and bolts and everything that are necessary to camouflaging vehicles and memorizing civilian and military traffic reg regulations. Um, and I'd like to read what his nominator has written about him. He was a soft-spoken man and he, but he did speak with authority. His military training on maintaining vehicles stayed with him for the rest of his life. He enjoyed tinkering with his farm equipment and his vehicles. He kept them washed and waxed, always immaculately, even though he lived on a farm on a gravel road. He was a devoted husband and father. He and his wife, Fergie, raised a son, Tony, and a daughter, Cindy. His children and their spouses attended and graduated from Greene County Tech. He has six grandchildren who all graduated from Greene County Tech. And he has two great-grandchildren who currently attend Greene County Tech. And he was always a big supporter of our FFA and their farm sale. And I'd like to acknowledge today Mr. Barney Kiesler, and I would like his family to step forward to receive a plaque in his recognition. He was a wonderful dad, taught me a lot of things.
First of all, I would like to extend this plaque, which says Barney Kiesler, Veterans Hall of Fame, in appreciation for service in the United States Army during World War II. And in addition to that as well, uh, our future Teachers of America chapter here at Green County Tech would also like to give a plaque in recognition of their service as well. me just a second uh, on behalf of my family and all you veterans what y'all did for us and are still doing we appreciate it very very much because like uh, the people that's been up here earlier speaking we wouldn't have the life today if it wasn't for you men and women and uh, this was a shock to me. I'd come in from a deer hunting trip, and I had a little note there, and my wife had submitted it. I read the note. Oh, it was just, just blown away. And what this school does for the veterans and the families and this recognition, it's dad smiling from ear to ear right now, and we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Okay, I'll try to say something without breaking down, but I wish all y'all had known about dad. He was a great man, and he loved this country. And he, I know he's dancing in heaven and standing and saluting all you veterans, and thank you for all you've done for us. And thank you, Green County Tech, for honoring him and for all your kids. And what y'all have done today, y'all have done an outstanding job. And thank you. I wanted to mention this earlier, uh, just for y'all to know what he thought about his service in the Army. When he passed away, he wanted to be buried in his Army uniform, and we still had it, and he still fit in it. And uh, as I was growing up, he always told me he was a joking. He said, son, something happens to Dad, I want to be buried in a pair of overhauls and a white shirt because that's where he, what he always wore when he was farming. Well, that day came, and uh, I told Mom, I said, uh, have you got a good pair of overhauls, or do I need to go get Dad a new pair and a white shirt? He said, no, son, we're not going to do that. And I turned around and said, what do you mean we're not going to do that? That's what Dad told me. He said, no. He said he changed his mind. I said, well, what does he want to be put in? He said he wants to be put in his uniform and all of his medals, so we laid him to rest in his uniform. Thank you. He was a wonderful dad, taught me a lot of things. He was always on time. You know, he, he went strictly by the book. He uh, was in the motor pool at, at one point in time. I think that's what he done mainly. He drove uh, the uh, people to the plains and just wherever they needed to go, that's uh, what he done. He'd always say, I'm a veteran. I served in the United States Army 
I'm proud of what I did and what I did it for him. Whenever it was over, they asked him if, uh, he said, we can have you home in, I believe, two or three days. And uh, if you want to fly on a plane, he said, no, <laughs> no. He wanted to take the boat back. He had seen, seen so much with the planes. He, he was scared to get on one. They said, well, it'll be about 31 days and nights. He said, that's fine. He said, I'll take the boat. Our next inductee um, worked at Emerson Electric for 37 years. He likes gardening, fishing, deer hunting, and spending time at Lake Norfolk. He was in the United States um, Marine Corps and in the Army National Guard. Uh, his highest rank was Sergeant E5. Um, he served in Vietnam and he was responsible for directing in helicopters to get the dead and wounded out of the combat zones. And um, he also flew landings. He also helped get supplies in as well uh, for the servicemen too. He has the National Defense Service Medal, Vietnam, the Campaign Medal with Advice Rifle, Rifle Sharpshooter Badge, Vietnam Service Medal, with a one star, a combat action ribbon, and a bronze star. And again, he was an engineer and also served in the shore party during the war. And he has a grandson who is currently attending Greene County Tech, who is um, a senior this year, whose name is Ian Parrish. Our next inductee into the Veterans Hall of Fame is Mr. Larry Jones. I'd like he and his family to step forward at this time. May of 68, 1968. My MOS was engineer and shore party. That consisted of several different jobs. Uh, we made beach landings. We was always two of us attached to artillery batteries, two of us attached to an infantry company. We had to carry a radio, we directed in helicopters, make sure the dead and wounded got on and make sure we got the resupplies in the right place. We had to carry demolitions to blow trees in case they didn't have a place to land a helicopter. Like our mail when we were in Vietnam, was we didn't get it on a regular basis. But when I did get mail, I probably got as much or more than anybody because my sisters wrote and my mother wrote at least two or three times a week. And every letter she sent me, it had a stick of juicy fruit gum in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think, most people don't think of veterans like they ought to. I, maybe they've, they've started a little more in the last few years. Uh, but I think our government is doing more now to help veterans than they once did. Probably a day don't go by, you don't think about it. I don't. I mean, I think about it every day. Especially if like a helicopter flies over or that brings it back.
present a plaque from the Future Teachers of America to Mr. Jones as well. Would you like to say something? You want to say something? Okay. My, my dad's not good in front of a lot of people. Uh, we are very thankful for him and um, what he has done for our country. He is very thankful to this school and all the support that he is now getting and for the plaque. And we just want to say thanks to everyone. Our final inductee <clears throat> has two children and five grandchildren. Um, their civ civilian occupation, excuse me, was administrative support and driver control. Um, they like to garden, NASCAR, swimming. Um, they were in the U.S. Air Force for 19 years and four months, and the highest rank was Master Sergeant E-7. They saw, served in the first Gulf War, Desert Storm, uh, from June to September in 1991 in Dar Dharan, Saudi Arabia, um, and also served in um, various locations like the United Kingdom, um, Okinawa, as well as others. They received awards for Meritorious Service Medal, the Air Force Commendation Medal, the Air Force Outstanding Unit Award with three Oak Leaf Clusters, the Air Force Organization Excellence Award, the Air Force Good Conduct Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, Southwest Asia, and the Service Medal with Bronze Star Small Arms. Um, they um, performed avionics repair on F-111s and F-15s. They also achieved the Expert Marksman's Ribbon, the Air Force Overseas Long Tour Ribbon with one Oak Leaf Cluster, the Air Force Longevity Service Award with three Oak Leaf Clusters, and others as well. Um, this person um, I know very well is a 1974 graduate of Greene County Tech, the same year that I graduated. Um, they have a bachelor's degree in psychology and is a 60% disabled veteran. Uh, they were the past commander of American Veterans Post 117 in Stockton, Missouri. And it is my honor, as with all our veteran inductees, to induct Peggy Scoville into our Veterans Hall of Fame. I'd like to ask their family to come forward too, as well. I was born in Walcott, Arkansas, and about the only jobs there were for women in those days was waitress or factory worker or teacher. And I wasn't quite ready to finish college yet, so I just decided to do something different and join the Air Force. I was an E-7 Master Sergeant when I got out, when I retired, um, and I was an avionics technician. I worked on the radar and navigation units for F-15 and F-111 aircraft inside a shop. I think the first thing that I would want people to remember are the Vietnam vets, because they are really the forgotten generation. They were in a bad situation. and. Um, never got all of the, the nice parades and the fanfare like the Gulf War vets got when they came home. So they need to be remembered um, as part of this, the great military and the fact that we all served to give everyone over here the right to put down our country and to burn our flags and to do all of the, those types of things. And I think people need to remember that we, several members of the military died for people's right to do those things.
we'd like to present Peggy with this plaque and as well, again, a plaque from our Future Teachers of America chapter. And I'm going to let Peggy say a few words. Yeah, one of the first things that my sister said to me after I was inducted was, hey, have you got your speech ready? And I said, what speech? So here we are. Um, I do want to thank everyone for, uh, my sister for nominating me for this and everyone that has put on this program today. It's wonderful. And it's, it's so great to see that the veterans are remembered by my alma mater. And like Miss Sullivan said, she and I graduated together. We won't talk about how many years ago, but, but when I left Green County Tech, I started college and then I decided that that was not for me right then. So I joined the Air Force with the plan of getting GI Bill and getting my, my bachelor's degree. Well, 21 years later, I got my bachelor's degree in psychology. My plan was not to spend a, a full career in the Air Force, but it's one of the best decisions I ever made. So men, women, boys, girls, all of you, it's worth it. It was definitely, I saw way more in those 20 something years than I ever would have seen staying in Walcott, Arkansas. And it's, I would say one of the best things I ever did. Thanks again, appreciate it. Begone, 
then I went under, oh ma, am I done? Hey, hey, mama, look sharp. Now close your eyes, my Billy, those eyes that cannot see. I'll bury you, my Billy, beneath the maple tree. And never again do you whisper to me. There's a yellow rose in Texas that I am gonna see Nobody else could miss her, not half as much as me She cried so when I left her, twas like it broke her heart And if I ever find her, we never more will part She's the sweetest little rosebud that Texas ever knew her eyes are bright as diamonds, they sparkle like the dew. You may talk about your clementine or sing of Rosalie, but the yellow rose of Texas is the only girl for me. Yes, the yellow rose of Texas is the only girl for me. That are weary tonight, wishing for the war to cease. Many are the hearts looking for the right to see the dawn of peace. Tenting tonight. Tenting tonight, tenting on the old campground. We've been fighting tooting on the old campground. Many are lying here. Some are dead and some. Wishing for the war to cease. Many are the hearts looking for the right to see the dawn of peace. Dying tonight, dying tonight, dying. Town, goodbye, Miss Liberty. Your light of freedom will guide us across the sea. Every soldier's sweetheart bidding goodbye. Every soldier's mother drying her eye. Cheer up, we'll soon be there. Singing this Yankee air. Goodbye.
by Broadway, hello France, we're ten million strong. Goodbye, sweethearts, wives, and mothers. It won't take us long, take us long. Don't you worry while we're there. It's you we're fighting for, we'll fight for you. So goodbye, Broadway, hello, friends. We're going to help you win this war. Somewhere far away, somewhere in the fray. Many boys are over the sea, fighting for you, fighting for me. They're all proud to carry a gun, their work will soon be done. Homeward bound, someday they'll hear that welcome sound. For while the shot and shell are flying, for the ones at home they're sighing. And though the sky seems gray, there's bound to be a brighter day. For when the dove of peace flies over the land, they all will hear the general give the command. We are homeward bound. That's a wonderful, wonderful sound. Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you and me, every son of liberty. Hurry right away, no delay, go today. Make your daddy glad to have had such a lad. Tell your sweetheart not to pine, to be proud her boys in line. Over there, over there, send the word, send the word over there That the Yanks are coming, the Yanks are coming The drums run tumming everywhere So prepare, say a prayer Send the word, send the word to beware We'll be over, we're coming over And we won't come back till it's over, over there
Listened while the sergeant was laying down the law. They stood there at attention, their faces turning red. The sergeant looked them over, and this is what he said This is the army, Mr. Jones. No private rooms or telephones. You had your breakfast in bed before. But you won't have it there anymore. This is the army, Mr. Green. We like the barracks nice and clean. You had a housemaid to clean your floor, but she won't help you out anymore. Do what the buglers command. There and not in a band. This is the army, Mr. Brown. You and your baby went to town. She had you worried, but this is war, and she won't worry you anymore. Trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of in the sky are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry.
For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternating between seven red and six white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white and a blue field, representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor, white signifies purity and innocence, and blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans both at home and abroad. In 1914, Francis Scott Key was so moved at seeing the stars and stripes waving after the British shelling of Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to the Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance our most famous flag salute and patriotic oath. In July 1969, the American flag was flown in space when Neil Armstrong planted it on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on constellations of Air Force satellites that circle our globe and on the fin flash of our aircraft in harm's way in every corner of the world. Indeed, it flies in the heart of every airman who serves our great nation the sun never sets on our United States Air Force, nor on the flag we so proudly cherish. Since 1776, no generation of Americans have been spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's airmen remain committed to preserving the freedom that others won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, airmen have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on lands and skies around the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are it stands for the freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish the, its legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all. Long may it wave. At this time, I would like to ask Colonel Nate Todd to light our flame of freedom, which symbolizes the gift of sacrifice of every American soldier throughout history, including those currently serving at home and abroad.
Join us in a reverent silence as students carry a portion of that flame for each conflict that called for American bloodshed. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 250,000 who served and the 4,435 who died in the Revolutionary War for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 286,730 who served and the 2,260 who died in the War of 1812 for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 78,789 who served and the 13,283 who died in the Mexican-American War for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 3,600,000 who served on both sides of the Civil War and for the 498,000 who died for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 4,743,826 who served and for the 116,708 who died in World War I for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 16,353,659 who served and the 407,316 who died and the 78,751 who are still listed as missing in action in World War II, all for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 5,764,143 who served and for the 36,916 who died and for the 8,177 who are still listed as missing in action in the Korean War, all for freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 8,752,000 who served and the 58,193 who died and the 2,413 still listed as missing in action in the Vietnam War, all for freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 467,939 who served and the 299 who died in the Persian Gulf War, all for freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 1.6 million men and women who have served in Afghanistan and Iraq in enduring freedom. We honor the 5,583 who died during the September 11th attack and the 4,474 who have died in Iraq and the 2,126 who have died in Afghanistan, all for our freedom. From the early formative years, our nation was bought with blood and paid for and lives lost and forever changed. From the revolutionaries in 1776 to the war between the states, from the war to end all wars to the sands in Iraqi desert and everything in between, we lay this wreath and cross of remembrance and on behalf of the student body at Greene County Tech, we accept and carry forth the flame of freedom from our generation to the next as the highest tribute we can give to you, our veterans.
Thank you all for coming to our program today. Now the GCT Band and Choir will close our program with a song of remembrance. We invite our veterans and their guests to join us in the practice gym for a luncheon immediately following. Students, you will remain seated, seated as our guests leave. Dial and, and all those that have worked so hard um, on this program to honor our veterans and I'd like to thank our students for acting so well today in this program and showing respect to our guests and I would like to thank all our veterans students one more time let's give our veterans one more round of applause and respect concludes our program for today. If our uh, veterans would like to exit to go eat lunch at this time. And guests, students, if you would remain seated until uh, our guests have left to go eat lunch, um, and we'll give you directions as what we will do at that time. Thank you, and thank you for attending. <laughs>